Welcome to episode one of Art Song Experiment. I'm your host, Epen Leubner, founder of the Denver Art Song Project. If you are wondering what this show is about, be sure to check out episode zero. In a nutshell, we take a song, give you some context, and share a recording. First up, our agenda. We'll start out with our backstory of today's composer, talk a little bit about the librettist, and then we'll share a track from Denver Art Song Project's first album, A Single Step, Songs of Beethoven and Donati, as an art song experiment. We are glad to have you here, art song friends, because Art Song Experiment, Episode 1, A Story of Scandal and Sadness, starts now. Let's talk about Stefano Donati. He was a precocious composer, and we know some of his songs were composed when he was as young as 13 years old. He wrote numerous operas and a tone poem, which is like a symphony, and songs. When he was in his 40s, the premiere of his opera, La Fiaminga, was such a bomb that he quit composition, dying a few years after, at age 46. Perhaps unfairly, most of Stefano Donati's work is no longer performed. His music is lovely, easy to listen to, and have a great tune that you can hum. Like I said in episode zero, we want to make our web show a great starting point for art songs. We'll get into more complex music eventually. Stefano Donati's most famous work is Trenta Sei Arie di Stile Antico, or in English, 36 songs in an ancient style. The songs are written for voice and piano. They are beloved by professional singers for their beautiful melodies that happen to be audience favorites. But Donati's songs are not just for professionals. Voice teachers introduce these songs with young students because the different songs teach practical lessons in how to use your voice well. They are great early songs for high school and college-age students to master vocal technique. You will hear that a lot about art songs, and I'll try not to beat that dead horse. Bottom line? Learn them when you are young, and Donati's songs will stay with you throughout your singing career. Vaghissima Sembianza is one of the more famous songs of Donati's collection. It has been recorded by countless classical singers of all voice types, male and female. The lyrics are by one of his most frequent collaborators, his brother. History and criticism have not been terribly kind to the poetry of Alberto Donati, Stefano's brother. Some critics of these songs may say that his poetry is a little elementary. Others say the rhyme scheme isn't great. One of my favorite coaches says, Ugh, how vulgar. And the score? Ugh, so fussy. He had it in for both of the brothers Donati. Maybe that is true. After all, they were still young and relatively inexperienced when Vegissima Sembianza was written. But I like to think that the lyrics express the situation and mood very nicely. The words are spare in the best sense, and tells a story but leaves a lot of room for the imagination of both the performer and the audience. Today's experiment, our very first, will introduce you to the style in which Denver Art Song Project presents their live performances. At our first concert in 2015, we wanted to experiment with using, you guessed it, PowerPoint, to share the translations of foreign language songs. Going with the theme of an experiment, we started the recital with a set of songs in a traditional formal performance, with the text and translations in the program. We didn't talk about the set on stage in any way. We then tried a couple of sets of songs where we spoke a bit to the audience and projected supertitles during the performance. Finally, we performed with visual art curated to complement the song, along with conversations about the background on the song and art choices. Our audience, mostly people new to the genre, overwhelmingly enjoyed the combination of art, explanation, and supertitles, and thus was born our performance style. Let's break it down like we do in performance. For Vaghissima Sembianza, my mind immediately goes to John Singer Sargent's epic painting, The Portrait of Madame X. It captures the theme of scandal and sadness that seems to permeate this song. I saw the painting on display in New York. What you can't see in this video is the scale of the picture. It is about seven feet tall and it takes your breath away as you walk into the Met Gallery where it's displayed. After seeing the portrait, I discovered the fantastic book Strapless, John Singer Sargent and the Fall of Madame X by Deborah Davis. It dives into the background, 
of the subject, Madame Gatreau, and the effect that the portrait had on her life in Paris society. When the painting was first revealed, it caused an uproar during the Paris Salon of 1884. It was shocking because of one small detail. Madame Gatreau's dress strap had fallen off her shoulder, and Sargent had captured that moment. The suggestion of intimacy called Madame Gatreau to withdraw from public life and destroy all the mirrors in her house. Because of the outcry, Sargent reworked the painting to put the strap on her shoulder, as seen here. Look, can I level with you? We're all grown-ups here, give or take, right? We can handle a little, little scandal. Take a look at this study. Pretty steamy, right? Well, I guess in the age of Grinder and Snapchat, it's not that big of a deal. But imagine it was a hundred years ago, or so. It would blow your mind. So let's start with our little art song experiment. This experiment borrows a bit from the actual story of the portrait of Madame X. Imagine yourself as a widower. Your beloved wife died years ago. And now, after much time has passed, an old friend invites you to his studio. He sits you down on a small stool in front of a canvas covered with a black cloth. Then he pulls the cover away to reveal an image of your wife, young, perfect, and exactly as you still see her in your heart. Thank you for joining us for Denver Art Song Project's first art song experiment. We'd love for you to share your comments down below. Please tell us what you liked. Tell us, nicely please, what didn't work. If you enjoyed this performance, please consider making a tax-deductible donation to support us. Denver Art Song Project is a sponsored artist of Fractured Atlas, and your donation is tax-deductible to the fullest extent of the law. You can also buy our albums via a number of digital stores, and you can listen on Spotify and other streaming services. By listening and sharing, we get a tiny slice of money that helps us continue our mission. Don't know about the mission? Be sure to check out Episode Zero. Finally, if you live in Colorado or are visiting, please consider coming to our shows. We are working to become the home for art song performance in Colorado by Coloradans. You can find out more in the links below. 
I've added a link to the book Strapless, links to our website and donation page, and added details about the artists involved in creating and the recording and video. Look in the thingamabob down under the giant friendly arrow. Thanks for taking a few minutes to share a song with us, Art Song friends. We'll see you next time on Art Song Experiment, and I'll close with the words of the poet Theodore Rothke. If you can't think, at least sing.